Hey folks, Todd Goldburn here with the Aerospace Structure Series. In this video, we're going to look at principal stresses. Be sure to watch the little video on transformation equations first, that's lecture 20A, and that will prepare you for what we're going to do today now on principal stresses. Okay. So in order to understand principal stresses, we need to think back to what we learned in our last video on tra stress transformations. We saw that we have a plain stress element with stresses on the X face, the Y face, and shear stresses on those faces. A plain stress, that means our Z surface is unloaded, unstressed. We can cut, we can look at Either think of cutting it at a different angle and looking how those stresses change, or think of rotating that element and looking at that X face and how the stresses on that face change as we rotate the element in different coordinates. Because the stresses are going to change due to the X, which now has a, a portion of it acting in that direction, in the normal direction and the shear direction. Y, which affects that, and our shear stress, which affects it. And we saw that we could estimate what those stresses are for any orientation of element by simply plugging into these two equations, these two transformation equations, which give us the normal and shear stresses for any orientation of that element, theta. As theta changes, we get new values, okay? Now, if we wanted to know what, at what point, so those values are changing as we rotate the element, but when are they maximum? Well, if we differentiate, differentiate those two equations, we will get the max and the min values, and we can find that actually the angle at which the normal stress is maximum, we're going to call that theta p, can be calculated with this first equation, and the angle at which the shear stress is maximum, we get by differentiating that second equation, and that gives us theta s, which I show you here. So theta p is the angle of the element at which the maximum principal stresses occur, and theta s is the angle of the element rotation, which gives us the maximum shear stress. Okay? These are the values where the principal stresses occur. So we can say any stress state we find, which can have X, Y, or shear stresses, and or shear stresses applied to it. If we plug those into these two equations, that will tell us the angle at which the maximum principal stress will be obtained, and the angle where the max shear stress will be obtained. Now remember, we have three stresses on this element. One in the X, one in the Y, and the shear stress. And as we rotate that, we're still going to have three stresses. One will be the normal stress on the, on the uh, face, that, that rotated face. One is the normal stress on the, on the face that's perpendicular to that face. And the other one will be the shear stress on the element. The first angle gives us at what angle the max principal stress occurs is, and the second one gives us the angle at which the max shear stress occurs. These are going to be two different angles separated by 45 degrees. So if we plug these two values back into those equations, plug the first uh, the, the theta p into the first equation, the normal stress equation, and the theta s into the shear stress equation, we will get the maximum values, the normal stresses on that rotated element, and the shear stresses, max shear stresses on the rotated element. And we get this equation here. This is our equation for the normal stress, and this is our equation for the shear stress. Now the first equation, you'll notice we have a plus minus sign, which means we're getting two values. We have two faces which can have normal stresses. That one that was the X, which now rotated at the theta uh, direction, right? It was X and now it's at theta. That's sigma one. And sigma two is the one that was Y and now it's off at 90 degrees to theta. So remember theta is just if we shove our thumb down the positive X, 
when we rotate that, what angle we make with the original x-axis, that's what that theta is. And sigma 1 is the, the stress on the 1 face, on that rightmost face, and sigma 2 is the stress on the face that's normal to that. That gives us this equation. When we use the plus sign, we get sigma 1. When we use the minus sign, we get sigma 2. Okay? Now, doing the same thing for that shear stress equation gives us the max shear stresses, two values, but they're just plus minus. Normally, we'll ignore the plus minus on the max shear values, which just means the up and the down. So if we look at this, we say, okay, we're going to get a different angle, that, say, that theta s, and at that angle, we've got plus minus a certain amount of stress, and that will be the max value of shear stress for any rotation of the element. Now, there's a lot more we can say about this equation, but let's go to the next slide and focus on what we can learn, okay? All right, so this is our... Uh, these are the principal stress equations. This is how we, so once we rotate our element to uh, theta p, we now have our two normal principal stresses. Now, whenever we find that angle of the principal stresses, when we orient the element in the principal stress direction, we're going to find that we're going to have a sigma 1, could be uh, have a value or be 0, sigma 2, which could have a value or be 0, and we're going to find out our shear stresses are always zero on the element for that orientation. So, and we'll call these sigma 1 and sigma 2. This is the equation we saw that is valid for specifying those. So we just plug in our sigma x, sigma y, and tau into this equation. Use the plus sign and we get sigma 1. That's the max value, which happens to be the stress on that face that was x and is now off at some angle theta. We plug in, we do the equation again with a minus sign, and we get sigma 2, which is the stress on the face that's perpendicular to that original x face at the rotated angle. But there's more to this equation than that. On the last slide we found, by plugging in that uh, theta s, we got in a different equation for the shear stress. But if you look at this equation, you're going to find that the shear stress is actually embedded here. In fact, there are two other stress pieces of information here in this equation. First, we find this first stress is just the average stress on the element. Remember our original element? It had a sigma 1, a sigma x, and a sigma y. The average of those two is this value here. It's the first term in the principal stress equation. Interesting. Next, looking at this, we say, oh, look, the tail end of this equation is not unique at all. This happens to be the exact same equation we got when we plug that theta s into our shear stress equation. That gives us this part of the equation. So the principal stress equation, which is this whole enchilada, the first term is the average stress. The second term is actually the maximum shear stress for some other rotation of the element. Both of these pieces of information are in this equation. Now, remember, whenever we have the principal stresses have no shear stress, that means once we find these principal stresses, sigma 1 and sigma 2, for the angle at which those occur, the shear stress on the element is zero, always. Okay, now, remember there's a different angle where we get the max shear stresses. That's the lower picture. At some other angle, we're going to find out that shear stress is maximum. Now, at that orientation of the element, we might find that our normal stresses are zero, or we might find that they're, they actually have a magnitude. So the question is, what magnitude do they have? Well, actually, both faces, when you orient the element, with the maximum shear stress uh, direction, we're going to find that those two faces, those two normal stresses, are always going to be identical, and they're going to have the magnitude of the average stress. So we see that the principal stress equation tells us the average stress on the element. It tells us the maximum shear stress on the element. And we find that 
that the max shear stress, that orientation of element, has this average stress that we see right here in the first term. That's the value, the magnitude of the two normal stresses for that orientation of element. Remember, any other orientation of element will have potentially stresses in the one in uh, the rotated direction, stresses, normal stresses perpendicular to that direction, and shear stresses. But at one angle, we will find that we have the maximum normal stresses. Sigma 1 is max, and sigma 2 is also of some meaningful value with no shear stress. At a different angle, our maximum shear occurs, and it will have the normal stresses on the two faces given by the average. What that means is, if the average stress is zero, then that shear stress, the maximum shear stress, will have no normal stress on the element. But if the average stress is non-zero, then that orientation of the element with a max shear stress will have a value. Now, I keep saying there's one orientation where the stresses are maximum, but there are really two angles because, remember, if we have positive x, we're going to have equal and opposite at 180 degrees. So there's always two angles for each one. But usually we're just focused on the one angle, knowing that we've got equal and opposite. So that means the corresponding angle at 180 degrees is also going to have the same value. Okay, So we find a wealth of information here. In fact, we're going to find these same terms, this principal stress equation and this average and max, are also going to be quite useful next lecture when we get to Mohr circle, understanding how to look at stresses graphically and how to unravel those, okay? Before we get there, let's make a couple observations. We've said most of these already, but let's make sure we got it. The max shear stress equation is buried in our principal stress equation. Our principal stress, sigma one, is always the largest normal stress for any element rotation. The shear stress corresponding to the angle where the max normal stress occurs is always zero. And the normal stress, sigma one and sigma two, occurring at the angle of the max shear stress is always the average stress. Looks like I get a little typo here. We'll just ignore that. Let's look at an example. This is the same example we used at the last lecture for stress transformations. Let's say we have a fuselage, and we pull one little element out. We've got a normal stress in the x, a normal stress in the y, and a shear stress. Let's go ahead and you apply our principal stress equation to get our principal stresses and the angle where those stresses occur. Okay, so what we're going to do first, we could calculate our average and different difference of stresses like we did before, no problem. We can calculate the angle of the principal normal stresses by plugging into this equation. That gives us that angle in radians, which we can convert to degrees. And remember, there's two angles, one primary angle, then the opposite, equal and opposite value, right? Okay. Uh, then we also have the max shearing stresses. We plug in our angle into the max shear stress equation. And that gives us those stresses, okay? And then we have our max in-plane shearing stresses, uh, shearing stresses, which are given by this tail end of the equation, and our max principal stresses, which we can calculate with our equation, as we said. That's how we evaluate principal stresses in aircraft or actually anything else. Got it? Let's think for a moment about applications. Let's say we have a fuselage. A uh, fuselage is going to experience stresses, first of all, due to pressurization. Most fuselage, most aircraft are pressurized if they go very high. And we're, we haven't learned this yet in this playlist, but we will soon learn about principal stresses, how to calculate the stresses due to pressure. It's going to give us hoop and longitudinal stresses. And so we're going to see that those stresses act on this element. And those stresses will be in the hoop direction and the longitudinal direction, no matter where we are. 
We also have down bending for the fuselage, which means up at the top, we've got normal stress due to that. So we've got longitudinal stress due to pressure. We've also got longitudinal stress due to down bending. So if we have a little element like at point A on the top of the fuselage, it's going to be stretched both from pressure and from down bending. We're also going to get a off axis or a Y direction kind of stress due to that hoop stress. Okay, that means that would be if we have, now you'll notice on this element that I drew here, there's no shear stress. If there's no shear stress, that's already principal stresses. That means we already know sigma 1 and sigma 2, because since there's no shear stress, that makes that a principal stress. Now, if we had grabbed an element off of the side of the fuselage, we have not only those longitudinal stresses due to pressure in hoop stresses, and we have longitudinal stresses due to downbending, it'd be a little lower magnitude. We also are going to have shear due to that downward shear of the element, which is going to be adding shear. So now we have stresses in the X direction, the Y direction, and the shear stresses. We can now take those stresses, plug them into our principal stress equation to find out what the max normal values are and what the max shear stress values are. Now in industry, we're normally not going to calculate those angles. What's the angle of the principal stresses in the principal shear stresses? Eh, who cares? Usually we don't need it. As students, you should be able to calculate it. As industry professionals, you should be able to calculate it. But we're mostly not going to need it. The way we're going to generally use this is we're going to input our values and find out what is the maximum normal stress. Who cares what angle that's at? But what's the magnitude and what's our margin of safety written against FTU? Also, we're going to want to calculate what's the maximum shear stress for any rotation. What's the magnitude and uh, what is the margin of safety relative to FSU? That's how these equations are used in industry. We can also use it for a wide variety of other problems, but those are perhaps the most common ways these are used. Got it? So last lecture we saw how to transform stresses, calculate the change in stresses on any face for any angle, any rotation of the element, or any cut of the element. This lecture we have learned how to evaluate the principal stresses at the, the, or the maximum stresses for any element and whatever rotations it can undergo, or the maximum normal stresses, or the maximum shear stresses. Be sure you study this material so you understand this. This is a critical building block for the structural analyst. Enjoy.